to their city council meeting from Monday, October 3rd, 2016 to order. I'll take a roll call vote. Alderman Putoff. Here. Ferrari. Here. Waldorf. Here. Lacocious. Here. Radke. Here. Alderman Sapienza. Peyton. Here. Ballard. Here. Mayor Harl. Stand for the pledge. Entertain a motion to appoint a temporary chairperson for tonight's meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, any presentation? We do have one tonight. Mr. Vickery, our economic development director, will give us an announcement. Thank you. I'll, I'll ask Steve Michelini to uh, come up uh, and stand with me. Uh, Steve played the integral part in uh, tonight's announcement, and so I want to uh, have him share some of uh, how all this ha came about. Uh, tonight we're here to announce a uh, new business coming to Peru. Uh, this is Johannes Bus Service from Rock Island. Their headquarters is in Rock Island. It's a school bus service that has been owned by the same family for three generations and has opened a facility on Furniture Road north of Interstate 8 and east of Exit 73 in Peru. It was started uh, over 50 years ago by uh, Harry Red Johannes and provides bus service to Putnam County, Ladin, and Depew School Districts. The family-owned company is now managed by the third generation managed by Jason Johannes. Uh, Johannes Bus Service will have 25 buses located at their new facility in Peru, five full-time and 25 part-time employees, and they will be transporting over 1,400 students per school day, plus transportation to and from extracurricular activities. They're based in Rock Island, and they're planning a ribbon cutting in the near future. <coughs> a little bit about Johannes, pretty impressive company. Uh, they serve club teams, youth teams, middle school, high school, college, and semi-pro athletics, Boy Scout, Girl Scout events, day camps, Bible school, summer camps, daycare field trips, church shuttles, senior groups trips, youth group lock-ins, post-prom events, wedding parties, wedding sh guest shuffles, reception to hotel shuttle, bachelor and bachelorette parties, group airport transfers, and employee shuttles, worksite tours, corporate events, company golf outings, event parking shuttles, and holiday parties. So we're very pleased to announce uh, uh, Johannes tonight. It's, it adds to our economy in more of a diversified way. We usually talk up here, we have a lot of retail that we do, but this brings paychecks into the city. And uh, fortunately, uh, we have some more diversification in the pipeline that I think you'll be hearing about in the next few weeks. But Steve, if you could uh, share a little bit about uh, this company that you know about and how they uh, came about. Um, first off, um, one day my boy says, hey, there's a building for sale down there. Go look at it. So I went down and looked at it, and um, it was it's a mess. But after we bought it, I got a phone call that jo Jonah, Jonas wanted to rent it. and um, so I, I met with them, and she, they informed me that they hope within two years to five years they got 80 buses working out of there. So, um, so after we, they they actually left left where they were at early just to come up here. They want to be along 80. They right now, I kind of wanted retail when I bought it. I kind of wanted to get retail into Peru, but. When they come and talk to me about it, and I said that, that's that's fine, and they because they said they're going to start buying stuff out of Bureau County in the La Sal in the La Sal Peru area, so um, hopefully they get 80 buses. But it's been a long trip; it, it was a mess. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Any questions or comments? Uh, 
fan. Will you be now the assistant economic development director for the city of Pearl? Yeah, I will not be the slumlord either. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Bob, is there any other updates you have? I know you've been working on quite a few leads, and it's been uh, very busy. I know when you're updating us during our committee meetings, is there anything else you wanted to yeah, announce? There, there really isn't anything else that's ready for uh, public consumption at this time, except for CBS. You know, the, the CBS um, complex with the jewel store had been taken down and uh, exposed the CBS wall, which has... Uh, not been painted. Uh, uh, recently, Mayor Harrell and I, a uh, fortuitous meeting at, at a luncheon, uh, ended up sitting next to some CBS executives, and we, of course, complimented them on the store here in Peru and how well we liked it, and it seemed like it was doing well. And uh, then we uh, started to talk about the old Jewel food store. There have been some aldermen who have spoken to me about uh, the painting on the west side. And there's an old um, chain link fence, and there's some scrub trees that are growing up. So it's uh, not as attractive as it could be. And uh, today I got a uh, call from uh, district manager for CBS, and they're going to go in there and get those trees gone. They're going to pull out that uh, chain link fence, and they're going to paint the west face of that building that faces 251. So uh, it, it's kind of a nice uh, up, update and upgrade to uh, to that building. And uh, I believe there is somebody working on uh, filling that building, and we may be meeting with them uh, later this month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any public comment tonight? No public comment. Nice to see everybody here. Uh, next item is minutes of the meeting for September 26. Do we have a motion? So we Motion by Alderman Waldorf with a second from Alderman Radke. All in favor? Aye. Financial reports, sales, home rule, use telecommunications, general fund miscellaneous funds report for August 2016, city clerk's report of cash received for 2016. What's the council's desire? I move that those be received and placed on file. Second it. Motion by Alderman Radke with a second by Alderman Ferrari. All in favor? Aye. Any notes on the financial reports? I might mention that the sales tax uh, year to date is up about 4% uh, from last year, which is quite significant because last year's was up 4% from the year before. Also, if you take a look at some of the cash received from the city clerk's report, for a long time I've seen dog licenses on there, and basically it's a point that we should probably either eliminate or enforce, so maybe next time that's uh, something we should take a look at from a Norden standpoint, uh, a little bit outdated. I know a lot of dogs are registered with their veterinarians, but something maybe we can discuss next time. Uh, we do have activity reports, water and wastewater report for August of 2016. Uh, Your Honor, I will just uh, <clears throat> read briefly um, the water and wastewater treatment plant report for August of 2016 shows that our total water produced was a little over 81 million gallons. On the wastewater side, the uh, east plant uh, treated uh, 105.4 million gallons, and at the west plant uh, treated 37.4 million gallons. And I will make a motion to uh, accept the report and place it in the file. I'll second that. Motion by Alderman Waldorf with a sec by Alderman Lacocious. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, committee reports, finance and safety services. Uh, Alderman Radke, please. Your Honor, first thing on the finance committee is disbursements. Total disbursements for October 5, 2016 are $1,117,756.90. I move that this report be received, placed on file, the bills paid in the usual manner. Second, Your Honor. Uh, we have a motion by Alderman Radke with a second by Alderman Ferrari. We'll have a roll call vote. Alderman Puff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Payton. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Uh, anything else, Alderman Radke? Uh, no, there's nothing else from finance this evening. Um, the chief wants to give us an update on the 911 dispatch. Thank you, Alderman. Um, just a brief uh, report and informational, some housekeeping that we need to address. 
um, as part of the transition to IVRD. I think we talked about it some time back during the last uh, time we amended the salary ordinance. We created an office assistant position in the police department and in anticipation of the need to hire a part-time, uh, very limited uh, used employee that would be the Peru Police Department leads agency coordinator. By law, each police department has to have a leads agency coordinator which regulates our lead system, national crime information computer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's a very, uh, you have to be certified to do uh, the position. It's very limited work. I'm guesstimating it'll be between $1,000 and $1,500 to $2,000 a year is the cost for the employee. Um, it's a once a month audit that the employee would have to go through certain records and certify back to the state. Um, the reason we need to do this position um, is, is actually good, uh, I think, from our perspective as the host city for IVRD. Um, and when I mean host city, we house the dispatch center and that was part of some negotiations that we had. Um, the city does charge IVRD an administrative fee of $1,000 a month and that's pretty much for the finance department's work. Um, Justin's been critically important to IVRD. Um, and there is some administrative duties that we uh, take and we do uh, charge for that and that was negotiated with the other communities. Uh, and it just made sense we we're the host community. The other benefit of having the IVRD in our facility is um, IVRD can man our lobby. All the other communities had to keep one full-time employee back to man their lobbies Monday through Friday. Uh, during business hours, and that person is their leads agency coordinator. Having our uh, IVRD in our building, they can man our lobby for us, but it wouldn't be appropriate for us to have those people do the leads agency coordinator work for us because each department's required to do that. So if there's no objection, I'd like to um, post that position. It's part-time, just a matter of a few hours a month uh, that's required to do that. Any questions, Council, on that matter? Doesn't look like anybody has any objections we'll to it. Then. Thank you. Anything mm -hmm. else in finance and safety services? Alderman Payton? No, I have not. Uh, Chief King, I know you were gone for a week and has my training, is that correct? Yeah, training. yeah basically uh, uh it was it was a good training. We uh we got to experience um, we went to Fort Ord which is an army base in, in Marina, California. And they took us in, and the first drill we did was they took us into, they built an, a similar, like a Afghanistan city on the side of a mountain. And uh, we went in two buildings and they uh, put uh, probably about right at 9,000 parts per million anhydrous ammonia in there and we had to go in and figure out where the leak was at and uh, attack it. And, and we did this all in bunker gear, and usually you're in a level A suit. So they trained us how to how to survive just with our, with our bunker gear. We did do some uh, level A response, but uh, all in all, we went through probably they told us right around uh, 30,000 pounds of anhydrous ammonia during the training. And uh, I lost track of how many bottles I went through, and it's more than I've probably done in 10 years. So I had a pretty good workout last week too. Well, that's good. Uh, I did have Jess Miller tonight. If you can update us on just a little bit of uh, recent city happenings from the financial area. Yes, actually, uh, last week was a very exciting week for the city. Uh, we received two grants. Um, both were anticipated. We just didn't know when uh, we were going to be receiving them. The first was a FEMA grant. It was a reimbursement for work that's been concluded on Water Street that Eric has been uh, kind of... Um, hosting and, and taking care of and we finally received a check for $81,675 from the IEMA uh, Department of the State. Uh, the second was the much anticipated OSLOD Natural Resources Grant for the splash pad in the amount of $128,400, which is 50% of, of the total amount. Um, but it's uh, two years ago when we were awarded that, I believe, and it's nice to see that come into fruition and being able to move forward with this. Uh, which is sure will be a great project. So uh, both on a Friday, about oh, just over 200000 in grants received, so a great day for us. Yeah, that's real positive news. Eric, can you just update everybody a little bit about that Water Street project? Yeah, certainly. Um, uh, 
project is just starting to get underway. They're mobilizing. Uh, we recently uh, went through some submittal approvals that came through in the past week. Uh, so I anticipate probably in a couple weeks you'll see it full swing. Uh, we're working with Ameren currently with their line shut down and the contract will come in mobilized. So project duration is probably in the neighborhood of six to eight weeks long. So it'll be a late November, early December completion for that project. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is beginning. Uh, anything from the treasurer? Uh, not right now. Uh, the treasurer's report was uh, held for next, uh, the cutoff of next uh, meeting. Uh, one, because the mayor was not here, and also because uh, we still have to switch over the Eureka uh, CD account uh, to me, and it required the mayor's uh, signature. Okay, thank you. Uh, Public can, Services Committee? Can I interject one thing? Jeff doesn't do himself justice. Jeff is already, before last week, one of the most highly trained hazardous material people, certainly in this part of the state. Um, he's sought after on the Mavis team, and the training that he went to uh, was a local Peru industry, sought him out, asked him to go to the training, paid all expenses uh, for the week that he was out there, and I think you're one of your assistant chiefs, so... Um, it's pretty big training. It wasn't just a 40-hour class. He's at the highest level I think you can get at, correct? So he doesn't, he doesn't tell you the full story sometimes. He's, he's very, very trained, and they sought him out. So um, I thought you should know that. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Public Services Committee, Alderman Waldorf. Uh, Your Honor, um, much to the relief of the people in this room that are listening, Public Services has no report at this time. Okay. Thank you. I reported the City Attorney Ordinances Resolutions. Thank you, Your Honor. I only have one ordinance tonight. It's an ordinance affirming salaries for the Mayor, City Clerk, Treasurer, and Aldermen without any increases. I'll make a motion that we accept the ordinances written and read. I'll second. A motion by Alderman Waldorf with a second by Alderman Payton. Uh, we'll have a roll call vote. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lukosius. Aye. Radke. Aye. Payton. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Any thoughts on that, that subject? I think after the four years, I think that'll be about a 12 year pay freeze for I think all the elected officials in Peru. Is that right? That is correct. We're still right in the middle of, we're still right in the middle of that. Yeah, we should say we did a little salary survey, and our, we're definitely not the highest paid or the lowest paid elected official in the area, pretty, pretty much in the middle somewhere. Yeah, and typically in the month of each month, City Council has eight scheduled meetings. Uh, sometimes there's more, but uh, those are, uh, for the majority, optional for aldermen. And, of course, that salary pays for all of the work that the aldermen do through the 12 month. Um, Move ahead on any other ordinances, resolutions? Nothing, nothing further. Unfinished business. I do have one matter. Eric Carls would like to address the council regarding uh, Veterans Park ball field. Yeah, I'd like to bring everybody up to speed on where that's at. I know last council meeting I was out and the high school was here, and uh, I believe Steve may have been here with the rec board. Um, Steve and I, of course, the last week, um, Steve is a representative of Rec Board, and myself is representative on behalf of the city. Met with uh, company supplier, Advanced Turf Solutions, uh, on site at the park. Uh, went through a few solutions that we could probably develop, move forward in addressing the issues that we're having at the baseball diamond at the park. Um, so I have taken the lead on this project and developed some specifications and got some information on what we need to do to rectify the issue that we have ongoing there. Um, and what I'm looking for, for the from the council tonight is uh, I'm requesting to put those specifications out to bid so that we can get some hard numbers in house and make some decisions. Uh, and the way I structured the bid is there's multiple add alternate bids on it. So uh, the basics are, you know, I'm asking for a price for the material only. Uh, Add alternates are items such as removal, uh, placement of the material, um, coming in and reconstructing pitching mounds. So there's different add, add alternate bids within the bid structure. So we'll be able to digest all those numbers and decide which is the best way to move forward. So okay. For tonight, I'm 
asking for authorization to go to bid? Uh, you know, I, I just think uh, one of the points you want to think about is to have one central person for this, and I think just to abiding with all the city guidelines and requirements is probably a good idea that Eric does take the ball with this. Uh, is there any discussion on uh, what we're proposing to do, what the city proposes to do? We're not taking a, a vote on how much or anything of that nature. He's just kind of looking for an informal vote on what to move ahead with. Question. Eric, are you still are you still thinking this can be done this year? Yeah, so that's that's why I'm kind of asking to press the timeline a little bit because, uh, as you know, these types of items are done this time of year with most ball fields across the country, you know, especially in the Midwest, uh, given the winter and then in early spring, you know, we get a lot of rain. So the best time to do it is fall. Uh, I just don't want to be too late where we get caught with weather or we get caught in a situation where people are too booked to get to it. So I'd like to kind of push this as fast as I can. I did spend a few days this weekend and early today wrapping up some specifications that I also sent over to the high school to review. Uh, I received the call from the high school. They're on board with what I had specced and how we'd like to move forward. So um, again, this is just trying to get us some hard numbers so that we can make a final decision on what to do. Is there any objections or thoughts? No. No. Okay, I guess informally we'll move ahead and then once we have prices, then that will be the formal uh, definition of that. So I'll, it'll advertise in the paper this week. I'm asking for bids to be returned on October the 19th and the completion date I currently have noted in the project is November the 18th. So. Your Honor, I have one thing on Yes. I just want to give you guys an update where we're at on the Arby's lift station. Um, <clears throat> we have put in a new shutoff valve. That was where we had to work with James Hardy and they helped us. They shut down for an hour so we could get in and, and cut in a new valve. We got that completed. We have the new check valves are in. Um, Wednesday, they're going to come in and start rebuilding all the rails on the inside of uh, where everything was torn up when the motor pulled everything away. So both of those rails are going to be getting repaired. They should be done, we're hoping, by Friday or Monday. Uh, we'll be setting the pumps back in there hopefully on Monday, and uh, hopefully everything will be taken care of with that, that lift station at this point until Eric gets working with the re-engineer of it. But uh, we've beefed everything up. We beefed the entire system up. Um, we're putting in soft start controllers. Hopefully this is going to last us a while until we get the new engineering done with it. So um, that's as far as we are right now. I just wanted to give everybody an update. Yeah, the whole pump. We still have those pumps. I, the one pump that came out of there that started the whole problem, um, we're looking at it. It looks like a pump seal issue. Um, I'm waiting for quotes to come back to see if it's worth repairing or just if we get a new pump. So I'm, I'm waiting for that right now. Do we have a spare? Yes. Yeah, that was a very important part in our uh, water system and sewage area. So that's a, that's a big it wasn't anything planned, but a big emergency. So I, I do appreciate the work that the city crew has done on that and making They've been doing a important. Big, we've done a lot of it in house. Uh, we, you know, the stuff that we can't do inside the lift station. Obviously, we've been contracting out to Stott Brothers, but the rest of it uh, we've done. We've done the valves and everything ourselves. So okay. Any other unfinished business? I'll move ahead to new business. Tonight we have a motion to appoint independent counsel for a zoning of the property at 904 Shooting Park Road in the city of Peru. That would be the Kaczynski office building. Is there a motion tonight to appoint independent counsel for that item? Your Honor, I'd like to uh, make a motion to appoint Jonathan Brandt. We have a motion by Alderman Ferrari looking for a second. I'll second that. Second by Alderman Lacocious to appoint Jonathan Brandt. Uh, for independent counsel for zoning on property at 904 Shooting Park Road. Uh, we'll have a roll call vote. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Payton. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Apparently that property is looking for a uh, different zoning. Scott, is are you familiar with it at all? Well, I believe Spring Valley City Bank has an interest in that property and our office has uh, conflicted that, so we've decided to withdraw from that representation. Okay. Thank you. Any other new business? Uh, petitions, communications. Yes, Your Honor. We have three. The first is from Ivy Rodders requesting permission to use the bottom half of Centennial Park for their annual car show on August the 20th of 2017. 
from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. I will make a motion to uh, grant uh, permission as long as there isn't any uh, conflict. A motion by Alderman Waldorf. Second. Second by Alderman Ferrari. Aye or nay? Aye. Next item. Communication from Erica Pierski requesting permission to close Second Street between Calhoun and Green Street on October the 29th for a birthday party. Uh, Council, you heard that request. Your Honor, I will also make a motion that we grant permission um, as long as there is no conflict. A motion by Alderman Waldorf. Permission Second. be granted with a motion by Alderman Payton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just for reference, the neighbors were consulted and there wasn't any opposition. Maybe we can put in there for uh, emergency vehicle access. Yes. Yes. Final communication is from Menards requesting variances for a property located at lot one of the Interstate Acres resubdivision 5353 Mahoney Drive. I move that that be referred to planning and zoning received and referred to planning and zoning. A uh, motion by Alderman Radke to refer that to planning and zoning. Second. Second by Alderman Ferrari. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No further communications, Your Honor. Uh, is there any public comment from anyone tonight? No more public comment. Uh, apparently we have no closed session tonight. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. Motion by Alderman Waldorf. Second by Alderman Ferrari. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed?